Dawn beckons. Let's get straight into game number two of Geek versus RRQ Hoshi in this best of five. All right, taking on some of the emblems right here. Quantum charge for Vin and Skylar. So both having the. Oh, whoa, 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 what is that? What happened? Clay flickering forward. I believe it's a mistake, a mistap from Clay, and Belowski will capitalize. Throwing his singers right at Clay. That is. I just said, I, I just said this is gonna bank on Clay. Hey man, you should have cursed it, Eterna. This is the Eterna curse coming to My fruition bad. here. Cast the curse be like that, but oh. Unity Ray actually wins out the Red Tree battle. A boy tying him up, putting so much pressure down. It's Irad. A boy now forced to flicker, but the Lloyd capitalizes on the flicker burn earlier. Clay just steps up. Very naive, and Beloisky capitalizes. Beloy just being so confusing here. You don't really know if he's going oh. all in or not, and he's going to go and try just duel Irad here, oh. but here comes Ray. It's not a 1v1, Oof. it's a 1v2. That's how active Beloisky is on that Hellcurt. It's always around the map. And even if you don't really get anything, the threat is still there. Now even with a Mathilda that in theory should be able to out-train, out-sustain uh, the Hellcurt, at least in a 1v1, Beloisky is still just having a lot more pressure. And that is allowing Ray to just be so active as well. Shield Unity and Vulcan. Ray stopping Iran's maneuver, the dash. I'm actually going to use all the way in its full range. The bottom lane as well, doesn't look like Skyler is having a good time in the bottom lane. Don has the vengeance, he can try to go for the contest right now, and Rad does exactly that. A boy clears out the mid lane, now the hard card is ready for a boy. Ray pops in that shield unity aggressively. Luke and Don, both level 4, Finn. Guiding win, bringing it back into the turtle pit. Ray and oh, Rad is going to be Don who secures it with just his damage. Physical attack, Ray. Gonna run away now, but the rotation comes in and a good appraiser's wrath finds his mark. Luke with the four man, don't run Wolf King as Boyski tries to get the stingers down, but RQ will just disengage. That's a one for one trade. Ladies and gentlemen, RRQ pick up the turtle. This is a Whoa. different story than we saw in game number one. Hang on. Boyski forced to use his ultimate here. Nearly gets taken out, but it looks like they want to go in again. Oh, man. And he melts him down now with a vengeance. Don, I don't even think he can escape it. Finn tries to rescue him, but Beloisky on the helper picks a double kill. All right, I stand corrected. This is a 3 4 1 trade behind that play coming in from Beloisky. With the rate that this is going, with the 1k gold lead now built up for Geek, who do you think it's worth it for? It has to be worth it for Geek, fam. I mean, initially it seems kind of even, but now. Oof. Again, Clay is just under so much pressure. He can't really go for these big ro uh, roaming diversion plays. But yes, this RRQ not respecting the damage potential from Geek Fam there. Losing two more after the initial sequence of events. That's something they need to reduce if they really want to try and mount some kind of comeback here. The threat of the diversion still is relevant though, especially the longer the game goes with more ground to cover. But Skylar is just trying his best to stay relevant and Vin just torn between trying to enable the rest of the team and trying to save Skylar in this lane. I agree that the diversion can be relevant, but who do you pair the diversion play with, right? If you want to play it now, you usually go for pickoffs, but how do you go for a pickoff? You don't have the Kaja, you don't have the Franco to go in for that single target hook. You don't have the burst necessarily just yet to pair it off with. If you want to play it towards the late game, will we even get to the late game, right? What are the tools that RRQ can have? I just find this entire thing quite unfortunate. You can see how much pressure Chidera and Boloisky is having here in the bottom lane on towards Skylar. And the fact that they utilize the Luo Yi with that really good base damage in the early game and they haven't been able to capitalize it is also what is unfortunate as well. But look at this. Don finds the poke right down. The Ray pops into Poison, gets the hard guard as well. Don goes in for the vengeance, but he will be shredded down by the likes of Ray. Just Ray and Luke. One member down. You can say one member done. I'm a fit in the flicker combo. Bringing Finn back, but he's still able to flicker out. As now it's going to be a two man engage from Ray and Beloisky out the clay who uses the flicker, but a boy just ties him up from across the wall. Luke still chasing him down, looking to go for more, and that's another appraiser's wrap, but Luke tanks it up like a boss. It's so difficult for our RQ right now. The targeting, the decisions from Geek Fam in these fights are just so, so good. And they seem flustered. They're the ones we want to try and find some kind of fight, but Geek Fam are always seemingly one step ahead. There will be a trade here for Skylar though. 
in the grand scheme of things, Skylar has been able to survive. Not really being shot down right here. No deaths, no kills either. He went with the firmness and tenacity in the emblems, trying to survive in this lane. And so far, it's working, but you have to wonder how long are our Q going to try and give Skylar this kind of space? Because if you look at these fights with the rest of Geekfam just converging together, already a, a, three, uh, a 3 kick gold deficit. I think Armor King needs to try and, and change things up quite soon. Looking at the uh, items built right here, Clay is just so far behind, not a single item built. And with Beloisky having the Heptasies, this means the squishier members are at even more of a threat. Chidera though, a desperate attempt in the bottom lane, but Chidera just outplays it with the help of the hard guard. They can't even take him down, not just Yao, Skyler! Engaged on Clay. Just the guiding wind to escape, but our Q, their attempt in the bottom lane has failed. That's just Geek Fam, again, rotating and having Chidera survivable enough. And look at Luke. Already tanky enough right to just stand strong against multiple members of our RQ. And considering that their winning lane is the Thamus that should be able to bully and be used as a reliable factor oh. right here. Whoa! And I'm offended straight into the damage. Beloisky will be traded, but they'll be happy with that trade. It's a shutdown to Dawn, however. So RQ do get a little bit more value. Man, Geek Fam just trying to make sure that there's not a single opportunity left for our RQ. And now immediately Irad comes in to try and commit a deny loop from protecting the turret. Skyler uh -oh. though, we flanked on, doesn't have the flicker. I'm offended with a flicker combo. Now Skyler brought inside of the tier one up top. His first death in game number two. So if they were banking on Skyler as their gameplay now, it looks like Geek are now paying attention to this man. Oh, Ooh. what? A magic trick straight out of the pocket of Geek Fam. Now you see him, now you don't. Don disappears in the land of Don. They're trying to go for the purple buff, and now it's terrified. Ray chasing him down. The taunt comes through, and the circling eagle as well. But look at the zoning from Luke. Finn can only just fly by and take the purple buff, but now they can't even contest for the last turtle of the game. It looked like it was kind of going into favor of RRQ. I think they were planning to use the dispersion combo in from Clay. I mean, we don't really see the damage come through just yet because we're getting further and further into the game. And of course, magic damage will be built defensively. But Clay now is picking up items, so that damage is starting to come through and the burst is starting to happen. But will it be on time? Will that power spike for Clay oh. be on time? But here we go. Diversion play. The ball lane only for the roamer. Dark Knight falls. Beloisky trying to run away, and he does! Wow. Beloisky did this to RRQ and M3 does it again in Season 13 of MPL Indonesia. Sneaky Viki, just like that, he's gone. Oh man, that was a big play that they were hoping to be able to do. And oh, Don, he's walking into a trap. Oh! Don, gonna be engaged. Don has the vengeance. He arrived, trying to buy some time in the back line. Skyler pops in. The ultimate, trying to shred them down, but look at Ray with all the sustainability. Now they can look for an engage again. A re-engage straight up. Ray, gonna lock them down, but will not be able to do so. They have dealt enough damage, though, to try to force RQ back out of this tier two. No vengeance from Don means there's no front line. It can actually tank this burst Ooh. damage. Look at the front with dash forward, and also the flask of the Oasis now. Back again onto Luke. Who has the flask, by the way? Is it just the boy? Wait, right now, a boy has the flask and Vinnick has as well. Ooh. Go for the purple buffy. Rat pumps into Prazer's Wrath. Finn forced to flicker out of his own jungle. Luke finds Clay, and just like that, the first damage comes through. What happened to the bottom lane? It's a rat who tried to walk back to base because he was stopped from recalling by the Kingslayers. They're walking circles around RRQ right now, and I thought that Beloisi was going to make a play onto Skyler in that mid lane. He saw him there, but I think Skyler was able to see him through in that bush. Gonna be able to avoid that particular interaction. But either or, right? 7,500 gold lead for Geek. They're controlling the map. They're absolutely taking away all the resources away from RRQ and look how fast they're shredding this Lord. They're blitzing it, they've got it, and they're gonna use it to try and close out the game. Well, for RRQ, they have to try and mount a defense, but Skylar, Still is farming, but he's only on two items right here. And even if he does get a third item, Chadera, I was about to mention, was close at Holy Crystal. Now he has it. We've seen the front lines of RRQ just immediately nuke down. It's going to be even more difficult for them to stay in front. 
Maybe Dawn with the Vengeance can stand there for longer, but even then, it's only a matter of time, unless Armor Q can really trade back some of the damage. Clay, though, with the Nexus of Durance will have more spells to throw out, and the healing reduction. If they can really force Geek Fam to clump together, like we saw earlier in the jungle, you saw that Geek Fam were respecting the damage potential from Armor Q as well. So that is something that they have to try and wait on, but with the Lord coming in, it has to be after this clear. Do they have enough time? Wait, what's Clay on right now? Okay, he goes for Enchanted Talisman. So the damage is not quite there just yet. I thought they might be in time to go for another damage item for Clay. But the King Slayers, they're knocking on the base of the kingdom right now. And it's not looking too well. But the damage, there it is. Chidera forced to go back. Still some respect given to the kingdom. For now, RQ can still play within their base. Luke. With a missed, I'm offended. That'll mean that RQ will be able to keep their base threats for another day. But the siege continues from the Kingslayers non-stop as they invade RQ's jungle constantly. They've completely taken it away from RQ. There's, this is not RQ's jungle anymore. This is Geek's map. But Skyler just secured his third item, Arashi. The later this game goes, the members of RQ will finally reach their power spikes. Got that call on an isolated back. Voloisky going back away as he pops into BOD, gets it. They still take it down. Ton. A weird engage as he moves forward, but gets shredded down now with a guiding win as well. Getting him out. Look at RQ. Luke with a flicker oh. forward and the two man. I'm offended to lock them down. Skyler and Clay still able to flicker out, but the Brazier's Wrath will not be able to deal enough damage. to Dara positive purified. Vin looks for a re-engage. Circling Eagle to the back line, knocking four off as Don goes through as well. Diversion to the back. And who's it gonna be doing? It's gonna be Skyler in the back with a flying up against Geek Fan. But look at Luke now with a three man. I'm or Gomra Wolf King. Ray chased down. Still with a concussive blast, still trying to survive, but Clay finally gets a dispersion. Oh. And the Jakarta International Velodrome. Erupts, Beloisky knocked up, and Clay will be able to deal enough damage for Vin to assassinate one of them. I'm offended, I'll tell you, Rad. And Appraiser's Rad onto a boy, but he's still able to sustain for a bit. Respecting this damage, but have taken three members down. No Lord to play with, but they can try to take this mid lane turret. Never mind, Luke just clears it out. The crowd goes wild as miracles do happen for RRQ, and this is the mid game power spike that RRQ have found. The fact that Skyler was able to get that third item in, Clay also dealing out that damage as well as the displacement with his skills and the fact that he was able to utilize the diversion to go in for a flank. Irad gets the Lord. Oh. Zaman forced, no! Oh, the diversion gets them out! Oh. Perfectly timed by Clay. Momentum shifting. See you later, nerds. Get the Lord, get out. RRQ Amazing. off the back of insane diversion plays. Now they have a full roster. They do have the Lord pushing in and the waves to play around. This is where Geek are going to be visible. They're going to be forced to deal with the waves and they can no longer hide, at least for now. This is the moment for RRQ to try and capitalize, but they have to be careful. It's still a 4k gold advantage for Geek Fam. The King Slayers have forced the Kings to bend the knee up until this point of the game, but look who's knocking now. The Lord is marching down in the bottom side and they're looking for some damage onto Ray here. That top lane is pushing. But it looks like that Lord is gonna be cleared out. RRQ with that Lord, what they what they have been able to get? I think they've got a turret on the bot side, but even now, ooh, Bomoyski just going aggressive against Ethamus 1v1. Just like that, the Obi still waves pushing for the side of RRQ. And you can see, they know that. They're trying to go in the jungle and set up traps of their own to try and shut down Geek while they're still unrecovered from that sequence of events. We have a game fact for Beloisky In MPL ID Season 13, only Beloisky managed to secure victories using Hellkurt as he was able to pick it up three times with a 100% win rate. The question is, this pendulum has started to swing. Will that 100% win rate be broken here by RRQ? Just like that, looking at the items, Rose Gold Meteor for Skylar. Even more survivability on top of Vin, wow. who has the items as well. But now, oh, Skylar actually has overtaken Chadera when it comes to gold. But look at this play! That was Vin! Look at Scott now, oh, an all-in onto Clay who flickers out but gets chased down like it's nothing. Beloisky walks him down. Two members 
down for RRQ. Now the Kingdom backing back to their base again. Veloisky with a terrifying onto Irad as they go for the shield. It is well. Irad cut off and taken out by Chidero. The burst damage. It's not looking good. It's not looking good. If Geek can close us out, we're going to match point. Skyler, top of the stinger, is able to flicker out in safety. Now the Dawn gets eliminated, even oh. with the vengeance and Skyler as well. The King Slayers. They saved RRQ in the regular season, but it seems in the playoffs, they are one step away from taking them out, from stomping them back to the ground.